Welcome, Pathfinders, back to the Find the Path podcast, continued play through Mummy's Mask. So, yes, episode number 30 as we continue our playthrough. Again, once or once again, as previously, the party has split and therefore we have split the crew. Dun, dun, uh, dun. All of you, of course, had heard the misadventures of uh, Sudi and Sagira. I uh, have not. May they rest in peace. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, Lord, we split the party and we paid for it. <laughs> hey, you have the cleric this time. That is true. <laughs> yes, I believe their exact statement was they sent all the lucky people in one group, and then Jessica rolled nothing but ones. <laughs> oh. Uh, which seems pretty accurate, actually. So we're picking it back up for our listeners at home. It's going to be back in time, if you will, as they had continued on through the progression of the day, but we're going to pick back up where we left off. So I'm here with uh, Heather and Rachel. I believe that uh, Citra is still suffering from some filth fever. Yeah. On yours is still cursed. Still cursed. Been cursed for I think I brought it up in the uh, in the previous episode to the other players, but I believe that filth fever was incubating, gestating. Incubating. Mm-hmm. Incubating. Since episode 10. Jesus. <laughs> so I think you've actually been diseased longer than we've been, or more than half of the podcast so far. Well, I mean, it's only been like four days it's in true. podcast land. Yes. <laughs> And the, and the course of this adventure has not been that great deal of a, an amount of time. So when we had last left off, these two heroes had uh, returned back from the City of the Dead, had gone and spoken with Falto, who seems to be suffering from the adverse effects of mummy rot, had then subsequently met with Tetmanib. Yeah, that was fun. Yes, who gave the, the party a quick little rundown of how he could help everyone out and generally creeped out about half of the group. Yeah, usually his presence alone kind of does that. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. After that, you had all decided to make your way to the Sunburst Market, wherein you were forced into a fight with the sacred albino crocodiles of the temple. And I had the best spell ever. And yes, a well-timed spell had managed to bring a peaceful resolution to said conflict. Except for that one guy. Yes, except for the one poor guy that died. Uh, But you did save his son from following him to a similar fate. True. So there is that. So I believe... uh, you guys had given high fives over the uh, placid form of the it's, albino there crocodile. Was, that, that did not happen. One of those slow motion, like, 80s jump into the air and slap each other in high five, freeze <laughs> I, frames. I don't think that <laughs> happens. If Onuris ever does that, we'll know that he really has, like, just gone off the deep end. <laughs> oh, God, uh, it's the plague of madness again. <laughs> Woo! <Yeah. laughs> he just starts talking to a bush like it's his old lost friend. <laughs> Uh, that only happened... I didn't talk to a bush. I just talked to a statue, apparently. It's fine. It's true. You then decided to split said party. Uh, Sudi and Sagira had gone off to sell your accumula- incum- uh, accumulated... Accumulated. We can't... Rachel, what's the word? Accumulated? There you go. Accumulated. <laughs> loot. <laughs> yes. And hopefully, Sudi managed to get a very... A decent deal for that. You're not totally positive. Considering you just said about their roles, I think we did not make out very well. Uh, it turns out that uh, Sudi is the absolute worst at buying or selling things. Lovely. Segura is not horrible, but Sudi's the Great. absolute worst. Awesome. I'm going to try to be surprised by that, but this is Sudi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he seems like, like as, yeah, Sudi's kind of just like very aloof. He's just like, yeah, I'm just going to go do this thing. He's really good at climbing. <laughs> He is very good at climbing. But that's only because Cat. he has a natural climb speed. And a lot of rope. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. When I saw his picture that like was actually posted of what he's supposed to look like, I was like, that's not Sudi. <laughs> Sudi's way more derpy looking. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> it's like it's like those pictures that you see where it's the kitten looking in the mirror and the mirror sees a lion. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of how I imagined Sudi. Like, I saw that and I was like, who's this supposed to be? And Rick was like, that's Sudi. And I was like. No, it's not. <laughs> He's more like the hang in there kitty on the rope. <laughs> anyway. Oh, poor Sudi. Poor Sudi. He comes in with a punch, though. It's quite true. literally sometimes. <laughs> yeah. He, he has actually, uh, he has pulled the party's bacon out of the fire on the very least one occasion. Oh, yeah. He was instrumental in the fight against the scorched hand. So, anyway, the party had split, though. The two of them had made their way to go and sell off the accumulated loot. I believe Citra, at the very least, knew that Sagira was also going to be dealing with some of her own personal issues, going and speaking with the authorities. I think Onuris knew that was happening, but nobody told him when that was happening. Yep. <laughs> so, well, it's right now. better Sudi than me. So yes, as we start, uh, the two of you are still in the Sunburst Market, as you two had decided that you wanted to go and speak with Septi the Crocodile, as well as take the accumulated art objects and antiquities 
and then use your own expertise in curation and restoration yeah. to review said items. And I think we were also going to turn all of our notes to the temple from the sanctum and all that stuff. We were basically going to do everything we needed to do with the temple for the for our last site and sell yes. the stuff. Yeah. And I was hoping to get my curse removed while I was here. Yes. The temple guards are here to like deal with the aftermath of this, yes. right? Okay. As we start, the sun is still rising, painting beautiful colors over the facade of the uh, the Grand Mausoleum. So it's painting beautiful light over the front of the Grand Temple of Abadar, shining golden and alabaster and pure on the opposite side. Boo. With a statue of uh, alabaster statue of Abadar holding a pair of scales and giving the thumbs up. I don't even know what Abadar looks like. He looks like a human dude with a well-trimmed beard, well wearing plate mail armor made of gold. Right, okay then. Carrying feel, a crossbow, usually. I feel the urge to graffiti it. <laughs> <laughs> what has Abadar done to you guys? Actually, Abadar is, uh, is one of the few primary Pantheon deities that's allied with horse. I know. I try to ignore that. <laughs> I try That's to ignore just, that, just like I try to ignore the fact that the pharaoh, who is also considered to be a living embodiment of Horus, is, is also a cleric of Abaddon. Is, is a total douche. Yeah, Onyris has a lot of denial. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, my thing is, is I'm sure Citra probably like tried to go to a temple of Abaddon to help her brother at some point, and they were like, "Do you have any money?" And she was like, "No, like I'm poor." And yeah. they laughed at you. Probably <laughs> you know? they would have probably given you a job scrubbing toilets for 20 years to pay it off. See, this is why Heather, the player, does not like Abadar. (laughs) Every time we've interacted with them in an adventure path, they're total tools. (laughs) Regardless, though, the sun would shine down. The market would quiet uh, after a a moment before the den would begin to build back up as the merchants re-erect their stalls. Everyone just kind of looks over and goes, well, that was frightening. All right, well, on to selling this basket of dates and goes marching off. (laughs) <laughs> you gotta make a living. I guess Onuris, uh makes his way up into the temple. Yes. The priests and priestesses from the temple would made their way down, consoling the, the now widow as well as her feel, fatherless son. I feel bad for them. Um, the temple, you get the impression just from watching as they make their way past, seems to be in the process of collecting his body, and you're going to imagine that the temple is going to be covering that since it was their own sacred crocodiles that had uh, done said deed. You would note, of course, that there, while you do see the presence of the the priests and priestesses of the temple, you don't see any of the presence of the voices of the spire. They're all too busy at the gate to the necropolis. Yes. The city guard would show up, briefly question all of you. The temple would be thankful for your timely intervention. Of, hey, it's another priest kind of showed up and solved this uh, sacred albino crocodile fiasco. That's what I do. It's like, yes, yes, I have the animal domain. Out of my way, peasants. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Before you'd make your way up to the temple itself, uh, sending up its steps and making your way in, there would already be a queue lined up. This seems to be one of those almost comedic things where it's just average peasant, average merchant, maybe a noble, three adventurers holding what appears to be a sick ferret. Average peasant. Aw, I feel bad for the <laughs> ferret. Hey, What's wrong with the ferret? Can I help? The, he's got the mummy rot. <laughs> Seriously, can I help the ferret? Does it really have mummy rot? That's awful. The ferret is sick, but they're they're queued up to get some some healing. For okay, the so I could if I could help the ferret, I'd help the ferret. <laughs> the line to go and turn in your results from your exploration, however, is substantially shorter. Probably someone indicative of how many groups that you understand. A lot of people are dead. A lot of people are dead. <laughs> A lot of people died. <laughs> we almost died. I can't really, like, judge them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You're just walking by and everyone's just like, is everyone's fighting and died? Did you hear some people, like, jump the squirt tan and, like, took all of their stuff and money? Yeah, that's really sad. Onuris looks innocent. Well, technically you are. <laughs> Had it coming. <laughs> right so into I, my knife. I guess. <laughs> so do you want to get in that line to try to get your disease cured real quick and then we'll talk to Septi? Eh, that would probably be a good idea. Which line would you rather get in first? Might as well get in the long one if that one's short. I agree. I don't know about you, but I have walked by those crocodiles several times, and they have never acted like that. And they're never this active in this early in the morning, and the entire time I've lived in Wati, I've never heard of them attacking someone. I still think it has something to do with that mask. There is tension in the air. I felt it. I don't know what we can do about it just yet, but I felt it. That's why we're here to talk to Septi. 
So stepping into the line, it would take the better part of about an hour. No goody. As you just kind of wait here. You're wedged between an elderly man in front of you, who mostly seems to have simply shown up because he looks to have cut himself rather badly on his hand the day before, apparently constructing a new crib for his grandson, of which he would tell you about nonstop. Is it just hit point damage? Yeah, it just really hurts. Cure light wounds. Go home. Oh. Oh, thank thank you. Thank you. Oh. I'll be certain to tell my grandson. <laughs> he gets nine right. hit points back, which is probably more than his total. Yes, he had <laughs> taken three hit points worth of damage, but he was hoping that they would come by and just kind of... Like, I imagine, and I know this isn't really covered, but I imagine that, like, poor people get to go to the temple, and then at the end of the day, they're like, well, we've got some channels left, so gather around. <laughs> yeah, no, here, cure light wounds, go home, take care of your grandson. <laughs> yep. He'd be very happy tell you a bit more about his grandson before it just kind of like someone's like eh, you're not in line anymore guy and he's like oh okay. good day have and a good day so yes after that you'd be standing in line with a woman complaining about her bunions <sighs> that i can't fix <laughs> <laughs> that's gross <laughs> behind you would be a kid that just constantly like sneezes and has one of those like noses that just runs down the entirety of his face oh god i so. can't fix that either <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. has the allergies <laughs> they don't have vaccinations do they no no <laughs> They have not discovered vac. Well, actually, they do have anti plagues. <laughs> that's more like that's Tylenol alchemy. cold, yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all hear the polio came back? Yeah. Friggin' A. Anyway, so you would stand in line for the better part of about an hour uh, before eventually you'd reach the uh, front of the line. What are both of the two of you wanting to get? Um, I would like a remove curse, please. I'd like a remove disease. <laughs> All right. So both of you can roll me percentile. You have a 20% chance of them having it available. So, so 81 want- or higher. Oh, uh, what? 81 or higher on your percentile dice. No, 47. I got an 89. You got an 89? All right. So, Citra, you'd basically be informed, sorry, if your disease isn't nearly as bad as, like, these cases of mummy rot and ghoul fever that we're currently dealing with. Uh, <sighs> they would put you on the list and tell you to try back in two days, although if you're feeling exceptionally poor tomorrow, to return back to the temple and they'll see what they can do to help you until they can get the spell. Maybe Tetmanib can do something this evening. Here's hoping. I don't want to feel any worse than this. On your issue, you'd be led into a side room. There you'd meet with Balthium, who is the... I mean, you actually know all the priests and yeah, priestesses I, of the temple. Uh-huh. Um, you don't really know her well. You definitely know she's incapable of doing this. She's a younger, less experienced priestess. Stands at about the same height as uh, Citra, so about five and a half feet tall. Mm-hmm. Uh, with black hair, the tan, grundy skin. Uh, she's a very eager person. She would give you a smile as you make your way in. On yours. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I've been cursed. Oh, oh, that's oh. Uh, sit down. On yours. Sits down. She would take a couple of seconds to examine you. Is Citra in the room? You could have accompanied. Yeah, if you so he wouldn't have stopped you. Citra is looking between the two of them suspiciously. What? Like, just he raises an eyebrow at you when he notices. <laughs> What? The, I just always forget that you know everyone. I worked here for over a year. He was working with the voices of the Spire, so I didn't really work directly with them. Although I've actually gotten to man the gates a couple of times since we've started doing this. Uh, I even fought a zombie, like, three days ago. That's just one, huh? Well, I mean, I actually stood on top of the wall and uh, channeled the power of Phrasma, but still, it was just me. Good. That sounds wonderful. Good job. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. As on yours, it's Citra Jared side eye, like, wow, okay. <laughs> um, so, yes, um, you do appear to be cursed. Thank you for that assessment. We, well, we already knew he was cursed. Uh, one of our priests wrote up a new scroll uh, as of yesterday, so I know you'd be able to use that. Or we do actually have a, uh, a priest on hand that would be able to uh, cure you. Which of these options is cheaper? The Having the spell cast on you is cheaper. Uh, if they can spare a moment to simply cast a spell. Uh, yes, um, it would be a small donation. Of course. Of, course, uh, of 150 gold pieces. Of course. Okay. She would have the priest called in, uh, another priest of whom you're familiar with, named Horzetov. You just kind of, yeah, on yours. The <laughs> curse. Yep. All right. It's gone. No. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think I need to bounce a die for that. So he needs to make a caster level check. All right, so I get a 16. So 16 plus his cast level, he's a fifth level caster, so that's 21. So he would just kind of look you over, speak a quick prayer to Phrasma, place a hand on your forehead, and you feel extraordinarily stronger. 
Thank you. Like you could crush human skulls with one hand. I'm not that strong. <laughs> well, I imagine after walking, you've had, what, an eight strength for the past day? <laughs> yes, it's awful. Thank you very much. He would nod before turning and making his way out. I guess count out the 150 coins and give it to the priestess whose name I've already forgotten because I'm a horrible Bell. person. Yep. All you priests are very, um, stoic. Yes, uh, we're, we're told to adopt kind of a stoic personality because it uh, inclines people to, uh, Not it portrays a, a view of uh, a professionalism and uh, uh, respect for the dead. Although I'm actually more of a birth and new life priestess, but uh, this is the only sanctum to train at. I couldn't tell. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. I'm glad that it's working well. Yours <laughs> just smirks at Citra. And then cans her the 150 golds. Thank you, and uh, hopefully you'll be returning to the temple soon. Maybe. We'll see how things turn out. Okay, well, uh, if not, then good luck back in uh, fighting the undead. And uh, it was nice to meet you, Citrine? Citra. Citra. Okay. Little callback there to when Onuris called Citra Citrine for yeah, two episodes. Yeah, like, <laughs> that, was, that, that was Heather that wasn't on yours. On yours has known Citra for, like, what, two I years? I like to think that the entire time, time that he knew her, he thought her name was Citrine. He's not was, that big of a Citra. jerk. He's... <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so you could collect yourselves, step back out. You, of course, know where Septi's actual offices are. Well, on yours leads the way. Hopefully she's in her office. Depending on what all has been going on, she may be in another part of the temple. You would notice that a couple of people would every once in a while glance over towards you as far as the people in the sanctum. I'm surprised they're just letting us walk in like this. I served here for over a year. But you also notice that outside of like the immediate entry area and the serving area, everything else seems to be almost dead quiet. As if all of the temple guards are actually manning the walls and <laughs> protecting the city and all that <laughs> yeah now they have to have somebody watch the crocodiles yeah <laughs> they roped it off they might want to build a fence <laughs> making your way through since this is your first time really exploring the back portions of the grand mausoleum the entirety of the structure is beautiful fine alabaster walls cover or surround you as you make your way deeper into the structure murals across the walls are done in what most people consider to be an osiriani style so reminiscent of the ancient style, although most of these are depictions of the Lady of Graves going about her various businesses. In the the three sections of the temple, of which Onuris would be familiar with, these are kind of divided into three separate categories. The front part of the temple, which is mostly where they deal with the mourners, the people arriving, dealing with the dead, etc., etc. It is a great deal of her portrayal as being the Shepherd of the Dead. That notwithstanding, there actually is an entire side wing which you're not passing through right now, but that deals with her taking spirits out of the uh, stream of life and then delivering them into newborn babies because she is also the goddess of birth and shepherding new life into the world. The section that you would walk into as you ascend up towards the second floor is the administrative side, not just for the Temple of Phrasma, but the Grand Mausoleum also serves as kind of a de facto city hall as the city's religious institutions and their government institution institutions are so entwined that the temple more or less is also the political center of the city. Here you'd see numerous administrative figures. These would be more scribes busy with dealing with the day-to-day -day running of Wati. They seem to be just as upset or bothered by the current situation as the priests below. As you can only imagine, the current economic system is sending them in a tailspin. You can only imagine across the, the market and the Temple of Abadar, they're just swimming in piles of gold. A la Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> yeah. Having a grand old time. That's that's uh, Abadar's, like, avatar, you know, that you can <laughs> summon is just Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge rating 15 duck. Anyway. <laughs> uh, you would eventually reach Septi's office. Approaching the door, you would find that there is a single man standing outside of it bedecked in the colors and clothing of the Voices of the Spire. The man would give on Eurus a curt nod as you approach. You recognize him? His name doesn't spring to mind. Good morning. Good morning. Is uh, well, Septi available? At this moment, he would kind of pause as you would hear a deep baritone voice raise, and then what seems to be a quiet voice trying to console said individual. The man standing in front of you just kind of awkwardly glance back over his shoulder. That would continue for another couple of seconds before the door would open 
and the towering form of Nakat Shepis would occupy the doorway. The man would glance once over the two of you. You think somewhat flush, as if he's been recently arguing. He would give a curt nod to the two of you. Return the nod. Citra kind of does like a little like wave. You don't think he recognizes you from your previous meeting. Mm. He would then nod to his second who was standing guard outside of the door before the two of them would make their way down the hall. Once they're about 20 or 30 feet away, they would begin to speak in somewhat hushed, and I suppose probably your mounting paranoid minds, conspiratorial whispers. Lovely. That's not good. Septi would stand in the doorway, glancing after him before nodding towards the two of you. Good morning. Good morning. Do you have business with the temple? Uh, we need to speak with you. The priestess would nod, stepping out of the way, allowing the two of you entrance within. Uh, Septi has previously described she is not an exceptionally tall woman, and honestly, for her position here, she's shockingly young. She has the uh, the fine features of most of the Gurundi people, wears a black hooded veil which drapes around her and robes primarily in blacks and purple. She wears a headband of turquoise, has a tiny little uh, Cayman crocodile skull that she wears as a necklace, which you don't know if that's because of her moniker or the reason for her moniker. Hmm. And she prefers c both coal and lipstick of an emerald green shade. Hmm. But Septi would allow you access to her office, which is a Spartan affair, with a desk set off towards your right side and a shrine set off towards your left side. The shrine itself is nothing but a simple, a simple hourglass, although the hourglass is actually devoid of sand. A window overlooks the market square below, where you can see them cleaning up the blood. I suppose you saw what happened this morning. I was a little distracted at the time, but I do understand what transpired. Hmm. I understand a priest was responsible for ending the threat. On your smiles. Yeah, he's right there. Fate favors us, then. I suppose. Bit unusual, though. I mean, have they ever attacked anybody before? No, they're very docile creatures. The temple of Wajet primarily deals with them. They are most sacred to the goddess of the river. Well, we might have an idea why. Do we have the proclamation with us since it's an artifact, since it's an ancient Osirian artifact? Yeah, you're probably really tired from carrying around the 25 pound slab of hey, stone. Hey, my <laughs> strength is back to its normal thing now, so <laughs> hey. Our last site was the Sanctum of the Erudite Eye, an old temple to Nethus. We found this. Show her the tablet. She would take it from you, kind of glance it over. My ancient Osiriani's a little rusty, but this is a royal decree from the pharaoh, the yes. founder of our city. Mm -hmm. To the high priest of the temple, entrusting him with a relic, entrusting him to hide it. We found a hidden room with a statue that should have been wearing some sort of funerary mask. The mask is gone, but the artifact was so powerful that there are still lingering necromatic energies simply from it being in the room. We, we know that someone went in there before us. We saw evidence of more than just more than just people trying to, you know, move in on our site. But uh, we did not find out who that person was. They were barefoot. We do know that. Yes, they left they bloody barefoot. footprints. It seems they came in, went directly to the secret room, opened it, took the mask, and left. As if they had prior knowledge. As if they knew what they were looking for, yes. But this... It seems very unlikely if it was hidden all this time. It seems as if it's been hidden since the city's founding, and then the... Necropolis has been sealed off for so long. It should have been buried. It should have been never found. The have proclamation doesn't give any details pertaining towards the item. It's but you know it was a mask. We're fairly certain from the evidence we found that yes, it's a mask of some sort. Haven't you felt it? And felt it. There's something there's in the air in the city. It's different. Tensions. It's tense. Yes. There's everything is on edge. When we entered the sanctum, there were skeletal jackals in the entryway. We think the power of the mask may have raised them. Interesting. Tatmanib sent me to talk to you. To inform I, me of this. I'm not sure. 
Tetmanib is a... Uh, that's one word for it? His insights are special. A direct connection to the land of the dead. He understands it perhaps better than any in this city. I have not felt this, although I must admit that I have been preoccupied of late. Is there anything that we could help with? I mean, I know it's not really my place. I don't belong to your temple, but on yours is. And it is a matter that we will have to deal with eventually. But I pray that the city will withstand the the end of this lottery and these excursions. Well, that's why I'm concerned, because if this mask is creating more tension than there would normally be... And if it has power to raise corpses, it's I'm, just going to make things worse. I mean, if you look at the line outside of adventurers that were exploring the necropolis, it's nearly non-existent. I will speak with Commander Shepus and have him dispatch some of the voices of the spire and one of my priests to investigate this site. We just felt we should inform you considering the potential of this artifact being set loose upon the city. You believe that it is necromatic in nature? Yes. Not evil necessarily, but necromatic. Well, the manipulation of life and death is in its very nature a duality. It is how one uses said powers. There are some of them that are anathema and forbidden. This needs to be investigated. Do you have further use for this stone? Not really. I mean, I wouldn't mind writing down a copy of it. Of course. I could just take a rubbing. It would take just a few minutes. Yes, of course. Uh, if it would be acceptable to you, I believe we could offer a sum of uh, 300 gold pieces. Or perhaps extend to you a line of credit of... 500 for the temple. Whichever would be preferable to you. I'd prefer you, the li line well, of credit, to be honest. You both can't make an appraise or a... Uh, My knowledge curator? I'll allow your curator knowledge. 21. Uh, I got 19 for an appraise. Uh, with the 21 and a 19, both of you know that this tablet is, in and of itself, about 6,000 years old. Mm -hmm. That being said... This isn't really a proclamation towards anything famous or historic. Mm -hmm. 300 is probably about the best that you could expect from a, a reputable dealer. You could potentially get more than 300 if you went to the auction and drove up the price some. You don't know if you could get 500. I think we should just take the 500 line of credit. Sudi and Segura might not be thrilled with it, but we can use it for healing. Yeah, I think that's better, especially since my character still has filth fever. <laughs> You're only 250 gold shy of a one or fully charged wand of cure light wounds at that point. Yeah, <laughs> we could just buy that. <laughs> the line of credit would be most appreciated. Very well. Don't suppose you have a removed disease on you by any chance? Did I prayed for one? I've already exhausted my uses of them for this day. What? It was worth asking. Uh, Tetmanib may be able to provide such services, although he prays later on in the day than I do. Uh, we're supposed to see him later today. Ah, you if may ask he him remembers. That. He'll remember. Yes, he has a very a shockingly keen memory. Could have fooled me. <laughs> I know he seems a little off-putting, but... A little? You get accustomed to it. He means well. Oh, I have no doubt about that, but he still gives me the willies. It's understandable. He has suffered far more than a man of his age should. What does that mean? I apologize. It was not my place to say that to begin with. Oh, we're just going to leave it at that? You're not going to tell us? It, of course it she's not, not going to tell us. At least a hint. <laughs> <laughs> she would make her way to her desk, unfurl a scroll, effectively write down, giving you a line of credit. Uh, she has a theme, as her ink is also in an emerald green. Thank you, Septi. Of course. She would stamp the bottom of the seal with her personal uh, cartouche, which is actually just like a crocodile skull. We still have some things to wrap up concerning the lottery, but if you need our assistance with this mask or anything else, I'll still be at the Tooth and Hookah for a few days. We will keep this in mind. And uh, I will send out someone to investigate this immediately. If there is another threat arising from the City of the Dead, we need to be prepared for it. Thank you for giving us this uh, information. Will you be returning back to the temple soon? I suppose it depends on how things go. Oh, um, my mother 
apparently knows I'm back in the city. I see. When did that happen? When Sudi went and got the potion of removed disease. Ah, uh, Sudi. He mentioned that I'd been working with the temple for the past year. She may come to speak with you. Your name was mentioned, apparently. Demage and I have had a difficult relationship in the past. She has a difficult relationship with everyone. I am good at keeping secrets. Yours are safe with me. Thank you. Thank you again for this. Uh, gonna go ahead and let you guys make an intelligence roll. On yours gets a 15. Citra gets an 11. Okay. Yeah, I'll say both of you remember this. You did shut the secret door, the super well-hidden secret oh. door, back to that chamber so that the scorched hand would never find it. So you, you might want to give the map. while we were going, right? I did. I mapped um, it. You I guess... can feasibly turn over all of your maps and rubbings and everything. Yeah, let's just give all that to Septi since her people are going to need it anyway. Mm, thank you. It was information we were going to turn over to the temple anyway. It just seems faster to give it to you so you don't have to go hunting it down later. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my generous. handwriting's a bit small, but it should be legible. Very well. She would take the scroll from previous, unfurl it back out, and add an extra hundred gold available credit to that for your additional services for the temple. So just kind of draw his little scribbling line through the first one. <laughs> Initials. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't actually know what the Osiriani writing system looks like. So <laughs> it's six cranes instead. No, <laughs> I was six. Who knows? <laughs> but she would then sprinkle some sand over it to dry out the ink. Spread that out before handing that over to you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Of course. We wish you all the best. Uh, I understand that uh, Tatmanev is finishing his uh, organization. He volunteered to be placed in charge of the organizing the lottery. Mm. So does Tatmanev just get whatever he asks for? He rarely volunteers. And considering that he did, I felt that he must be must feel that he was led. Mm. I Tetanib always get the impression is, that he knows more than he lets on. He does, I believe. I also believe that he does not withhold it out of malice. But more, he knows where things will go. Hmm. But once he interferes, he has no knowledge of where it will go from there. Hmm. That makes sense. Good day to both of you. Thank I you again, you well. Septi. Of course. If we find anything further, I will have someone inform you. Okay. I hope your day gets better. It is only beginning. That's true. Well, we have lines to go wait then, so... So very exciting. <laughs> very well. I wish you well. Go in safety and peace. And may today not be your day. Thank you. You for Rasmans always have such ominous things to say. <laughs> <laughs> she would actually laugh and then shove you out. <laughs> Shut the door behind you. <laughs> we should go... Don't die! <laughs> <laughs> we should go sell what artifacts we can and then... How do you feel about spending the rest of the day going through those papers we found at the library? Mm, sounds like a good plan. We can keep an eye on Falto while we sort through them. Yeah. Um, Tetmanib assured me he is not going to die of this, so... You I'm... should listen to Tetmanib. Makes me feel a little better. We anyway. go get in yet another line. Yay! What are you getting into a line for? To sell the artifacts and stuff that we or, have. Or to put them up for the auction. The auction or whatever it is. Yes, so uh, making your way from there. I suppose if you ask any of the priests for directions for the auction, mm -hmm. they would inform you that this is going to be hosted at the Candy Jackal. The uh, what? What? The Candy Jackal. Candy? Canny. Canny. Okay. <laughs> I heard candy. The Candy too. Jackal. Oh, no, the Candy like... Jackal. You walk outside, there's just a big pinata hanging in front of the building of the Jackal. <laughs> I, I really heard candy, too. I, too. I was like, what? It's full of candy. <laughs> A bunch of children just beating it with sticks viciously. It explodes and just rains. Wrong culture. Uh, wrong culture. But yes, you can make your way over to the Candy Jackal. I'm going to hear candy <laughs> every single time now. This would be exceptionally easy to find. Uh, feasibly, if you can take 10 on a uh, knowledge local and get a 10. You think living here, like most of my life, I could do that, but I could not. I can get a 19. <laughs> you have a negative intelligence score? No, I, oh well, yeah, well, I can't take a 10 on stuff, no, right? No, you can, you can take I thought, 10. I thought on and you can make any. you can also make, you can make any knowledge check if the DC is 10. Oh, okay, then yes, I, I do know where it is. Well, Everyone's fun fact for the day is you can actually roll knowledge checks for DC 10 or lower knowledge. Well, I get a 19 taking 10. Ah. Then, yes, it is exceptionally easy to find as it's also off the Sunburst Market. You can oh. actually see it from the front steps of the temple. On yours is like, oh, I, I never knew that was there. <laughs> <laughs> You've lived here how long? Well, it's been a while. 
<laughs> so you lived here a year. You were in Tefu before I that. I lived here for 15 years, and then I left and just recently returned for the lottery. Because of your mom? Mostly. You don't talk much about her. I only ever got snippets. She's not pleasant. No offense, but you're not always a ray of sunshine either. I'm nicer than she is. Always. I've never met your mother. I can't judge. Be glad that you haven't. <laughs> I feel sorry for Sudi. Well, Sudi is very good at just looking at the bright side of things. Even your mother, probably. <laughs> I should ask him his opinion of her next time we... When we get back together this evening. Yeah, hopefully the their day is going as smoothly as ours, I guess. <laughs> what were they doing besides selling the other goods we found? Oh, they were going to speak to the city guard about uh, Sigir's mother, remember? I never did get the full story on that. Um, I mean, we don't really have a full story. We were coming back from the Whispering Stone... Um, which was a great evening, by the way. You missed out on a really good evening. I was busy dying. I didn't say you... <laughs> <laughs> you still missed out. Anyway. So we were coming back, and there was this crazy, ominous figure. I don't know if he was actually crazy, but it was a partially drunk. drunk. Anyway, so he shows up in this alleyway, and we were, like, ready. Like, we were going to fight, but then... Sh or I was, anyway. And then uh, Sagira recognized him. And uh, basically he said that he was her dad and that her mother was dead. Supposedly killed by somebody looking for uh, Mamiya, I think they said, or drugs of some kind. And she just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And then I guess they caught him? I, I'm not exactly sure. I don't remember a whole lot from that evening other than it was very weird and... I don't know. I don't know Sigira well enough to want to go to that meeting. Yeah, so. neither do I. So, so that's Sudi's job. Sudi can take care of that. Can he? I hope so. I mean, they've survived this long. But. Sudi means well, but sometimes... Well, he's Sudi. <laughs> <laughs> but he always pulls through. He does. That's one thing you can say about Sudi. Sudi always pulls through. Or at least in the four days I've known him. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that goes well. It seems very suspicious, to be honest. I think there's more to the story than what that... Or what her father was telling us. But they did not seem to get along. Like, you and your mother have a relationship? Ooh, something was going on between the two of them, that's for sure. I think you might be the only one with normal parents. I'd say so. I mean, normal for Assyrians. <laughs> They're supposed to be coming for a visit soon, so that'll be fun. To Wati? Just for a visit. I haven't seen them in a bit. Now might not be the best time with this mask. Mm. I did actually think about that. I thought about writing them to tell them to stay in Tefu. That might be wise. Yeah. It's unfortunate. I wanted to see them. Well, we'll get there eventually. We make our way yeah, to we're the candy really jackal. Waiting on you. <laughs> I was waiting for you guys to yeah. <laughs> banter as much as you want. <laughs> Making your way out, though, you would cross across the sun burst market. Distantly seeing Segura screaming at some person over the raid of whatever. I'm sure we keep walking. <laughs> Sudi just sitting there with like his tail kind of hanging low, like, I don't know to be here. <laughs> no, you would make your way out. The Candy Jackal is located on the southern side of the market. Uh, so effectively, you'd cross across the central portion of the market, make your way through the various uh, pillars that have been left over here from the first age of Osirian. These at one point probably held up something else. Although over time, their mantle pieces have collapsed. And so now it's just a field of five foot thick pillars standing some 30 feet tall, standing out in the open. Uh, whatever decorations or carvings or hieroglyphs that they once contained over the millennia have worn away to nothing. The Candy Jackal itself is a newer constructed building, although it still seems to be under construction as there's actually scaffolding around the entrance where they seem to be erecting some sort of new sign built into or built directly over the entryway. A wide set of steps would lead up to three doors, which would make their way in to allow people to come and go as they so wish, although only one of those doors would be open right now. These steps are flanked by two rather fine carved granite statues of jackals. Uh, these would sit on either side, and both jackals seem to have a sly smile. You would notice as you approach that each of the jackals seem to be winking at each other from across the expanse of the stairs. You're not entirely positive that this should endure a sense of, you're going to get a good deal here? 
Directly in front of these doors is a large pillar. This pillar has been more recently constructed of wood. Covering these are numerous hands that have been nailed against the pillars from people who have attempted to steal, you imagine, from the candy jackal. Like real hands? Like human hands. Ugh. So that's the law. They don't mess around in Wati. Uh, hmm. For Citrus, since you made a 19, I believe? 19. You've actually heard of the Candy Jackal before you even came to Wati. The Candy Jackal hosts many of Wati's richest collectors and historians. Do you know of other people from the library who have come to Wati to bid on historical artifacts that have been brought to the Candy Jackal? The Candy Jackal hosts local nobles as well as representatives from On, Tefu, and even as far away as Sothis. Mostly because of the sheer number of ancient sites in the surrounding region. Since the pharaoh opened up the ruins outside of the cities to exploration seven years ago, mm. numerous artifacts have flooded into Wati and then subsequently have been handled here. Mm. Ascending up the white steps, you would see a young man standing at the top of the stairs. The man wears fine white pants, no shirt but an open vest, and a fez. He would give all of you a broad uh, smile as you make your way to the top of the steps. Good afternoon. Oh, morning. Whatever it is now. Uh, welcome to the Candy Jackal. How may I be of assistance to you? We're here to submit some artifacts for the auction. Adventurers. That's one word for it. Yes, yes. Come in, come in, please. I'll, I'll take care of you. Don't worry about it. Okay. What is your name? Oh, my name is Kameen. Nice to meet you. Yes, of course. Kameen would lead you inside. Inside you would find that it is blessedly cool in here. The doors open up into a large chamber. Your first thought is it's almost more like a theater. There's a stage that you can see on the far side from here, as well as rows and rows of chairs. This place could comfortably sit, you'd say, the better part of maybe 50, 60 people with plenty of room to walk around. Probably double that if they had a pack market. Hmm. He would lead you instead, though, to a small side table. You would notice that there are a number of people currently here. Most of these seem to be people working or business people, although you would actually pass a uh, quartet of people from Andorin, who would give all of you just kind of a nod, tilting their heads. Kind of like the Americans from the Mummy movie. <laughs> yeah, just kind of, one of them tilts his hat towards Citra, ma'am, and makes his way past. One of these things is not like the other. Yeah, probably oh, those are the Four Lanterns. The what? The, the Four Lanterns. They're, uh, they're a band of uh, explorers. They came in from Andorin. They participated in the uh, exploration of the necropolis. Oh, did they? I they, don't remember seeing them, but there was a lot of groups going in there. That's true. They don't. You're just like, okay, they kind of look familiar. They have matching tricone hats. <laughs> anyway, he would lead you over to the side. Arriving at the table, you would notice that there are a number of items that seem to have been kind of just like jotted down. And who are the two of you representing? The doorkeepers of the Duat. Ah, yes. He would pull out a list that seems to be not in the handwriting of anything else that you see here. Going through this, this seems to be a full list of, you're going to guess, all of the groups that participated. You'd notice that the scorched hand is marked on there. You would also notice that there are numerous groups that have been crossed off or checkmarked. What uh, is the difference between the crossing out and the checkmark? The crossing off are groups that are no longer participating, either because their numbers are dead or they have backed out of the exploration of the necropolis. The but check marks are for groups that have finished all three of their explorations. I'm afraid that your name isn't marked. We finished this morning. We turned in the last turned in our things to the temple. Ah, okay. Well, what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to put a little circle here, and then when I get word back from the temple, I can put a check mark through that to let me know. But I can go ahead and take care of you right now. But if they do not confirm that, I cannot allow you to participate in the auction. You understand? But if you just went over there, you came back over here, we haven't heard from them yet. You know how it goes. Two how different often, groups just trying to coordinate. How often do you hear from them? Usually around, Priestess will oftentimes stop by on her way back from lunch. They tend to take their lunch around noon, so it's a little bit before that. So I should probably hear from them here pretty shortly. If you want to, we've got some great tea and a couple of herbs. I can find you a place to sit down. If you want to take a load off for a little bit, I can hear back from them. But regardless, we can take care of all that right now. I feel like this guy's about to start trying to sell me a car. Can I, <laughs> can I sense motive? Yeah, you can sense motive if you so wish. Please do. <laughs> you know what? Sure, I'll roll two. I got a 15 on my sense motive. I only get a 14. No, you think he's legitimately interested in your business? In that, like, he really wants you to go ahead and set everything up here instead of just going, well, screw this, and I'm going to go to a less reputable auction house. Well, I suppose we'll put out the objects that we brought. I don't have the loot list, so I'm not sure what we brought. So here's how this is going to work. You know what you've got, right? Uh-huh. Okay. What you're going to tell me is how you want to break these down 
into lots. In three days time, we're going to have this auction. What you're going to do is I can give you some paperwork. You can take it with you, fill it out at your leisure. Then you take the paperwork, you write down all the items that you want in your individual lots. Each one of those are going to be bid on in, on in, yes, individually. So when you come back, we'll set those lots up. You can actually put them all in one lot if you so wish. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to sell them. What you're going to want to think about, you want to think about them as themes. So what's going to happen is the night of, you're going to show up. You're going to show up at sunset. The auction's going to begin right about an hour after sunset. That's when everyone comes in. We get a lot of people coming in. We get people from Om, we get people on Tefu, we get people from Sothis. Uh, we had some Chelish people in here not too long ago. I think they work with the devil worshippers. Anyway, you're going to bring in all of these things. We're going to write them all down. And then you're going to smooze. You're going to walk around, you're going to talk to some people, you're going to try to find out, you know, what they're interested in, so on and so forth. You really sell it up. That's how it's kind of, it's going to come back for you. You understand what I mean? You're going to talk to these people and there's going to be some guy and you'll see this guy over here and he's going to be like, oh, well, I'm a, I think a master swordsman we, from the far north. I think we understand the concept. Right, right. And then you really play it up. I'm going to tell you what really sells. Stories. Nobles love stories. You can go, this is an 8,000-year-old vase. They don't care. If you go, this is an 8,000-year-old vase that we took from the tomb of a mummy that killed five people, then they care. They're going to spend money on that. So we should lie. No, no, you um, tell the truth. You have, like... We don't uh, need to lie. Look, look let's take it just... just what, what, do you, what do you have in your pack? What's that? What's that? I see something golden there. What's that? Let's 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 take it... Okay, so you got this mask, right? This yes. golden mask. This came off of a, a what? A, a, a dead person. Uh, it's Obviously. usually what you do with the funerary mask. Right. What was this guy... What, what did he do in life? He was a priest of Nethus. He was a priest of Nethus. Okay. Was he uh, undead or just dead? Just dead. Was there anything undead there? Not uh, that what? particular one. We did get attacked by a mechanical snake once. Oh, a mechanical snake? That's great! So that's what you tell them. Well, I mean, if that's what this... You don't have to lie about this thing. I mean, you could just basically be like, well, we had to fight this horrible mechanical snake, or whatever it was, and then we killed it, and then we took this mask, and then that's how this mask came to I, you. I think that was in the room with the corpse that tried to strangle me. A oh. strangling corpse! Not to That's mention the sarcophagus story. that tried to eat Sudi. Uh, uh, that too. Yeah, a sarcophagus that ate Saudi. Sudi! Sudi, yeah. You can tell him that your friend died. But he, he didn't. He didn't die. Oh, well, then just tell him that you can leave it to their imagination. And then you just kind of play it up. That's how you're going to get the real money for this. Oftentimes, I guarantee you, no, I can't guarantee you, but oftentimes you're going to get more money coming to us than you will just going out there and selling it to some guy on the street. Because here you... You get to work with us. We get a back and forth. You see what I'm doing with my hands here? Back and forth. Anyway, uh, that paperwork. Yeah, right here. Uh, how many how many lots do you think you're going to want to divide this into? You know what? Don't answer me now. I'll give you five. Okay. Bring back the extra paperwork if you don't need it. That's fine. That's great. So we're going to go sit down now. Okay, so that's phenomenal. We've got some tea just left to the side. And we've got some olives and some dates. Make sure to check out the dates. Are they bad? No, no, no. They're, they're great. Thank you. Keep you regulated. For... Thank you for your help. Okay. He gives you, like, the finger guns, and then you make your way <laughs> All right, buddy Christ. <laughs> I think somebody is a little overexcited about their job. <laughs> My dad runs the store. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, so back Ooh. to the tooth and hookah. I don't know. We've got time. You want some dates? <laughs> you stuff your pocket full of dates and then leave. <laughs> we can have some tea, I suppose. I kind of want to see what everyone else has. <laughs> is there a way for us to look at what else has been submitted so far? Is any of it out? Let's, Make let's... a bluff or stealth check to go over there and look at it nonchalantly. Yeah, let's be nonchalant. So it's a bluff check to be nonchalant or a stealth check to go I have sneak over there. no ranks in either one of those, so I'm just going to go with my natural charisma for a bluff I'm check. Stealth. Uh, on yours gets a 20 to look nonchalant. I get a 19 stealth. On yours could make its way over there, just kind of look nonchalant. You know, Citra just kind of quietly sneaks over there and also trying her best to look nonchalant, but actually just kind of sliding some paperwork out and kind of <laughs> flipping through it a little bit. Yeah, it looks like most of the things on here, there are a number of lots from various groups. Yeah. Many of these seem to include things such as uh, armor, weapons, magic item lots. It looks like most groups are doing things along the lines of putting weapons all in one lot, armor all in one lot, things like that, if they're attempting. Although you sent most of that stuff with Sudi and Segura, so you imagine if they're going to get a good price, they'll probably just sell the magic stuff to begin with. Mm -hmm. 
it seems like most people are dividing the art stuff up into individual lots if they can, although individual linked lots. Mm -hmm. So you see a couple of them where it's like three funerary masks that they're putting together. Right. And then one of them you see is actually what appears to be an empty sarcophagus that they brought back the entire sarcophagus. Something tells me Phrasma's not going to be happy about that one. Well, it's, it's labeled as sarcophagus unused. If they're being honest and it wasn't used, but if they left a corpse on the floor... <laughs> And dump. <laughs> <laughs> that one is labeled for the uh, the four lanterns. Americans. Americans. <laughs> but yeah, there's other ones that have art objects, do jewelries. We, do we see anything from any of the other groups that we recognize? Yes, the dog soldiers are actually on this list. What, what is Marin trying to get rid of? Looks like mostly various ancient cutlery, as well as a cask of 2,000-year-old honey. Hmm. Whoa. It That's never impressive. goes bad. No. <laughs> That's impressive. Well, I suppose after being all nonchalant and having our tea... Well, I think we have a good chance of getting some stuff sold. I don't know. How good are you at schmoozing? Oh, I'm the eye roll tells me. <laughs> so much. I mean, I grew up in a noble house. What do you think? I think you hate it, but you know how to do it. Exactly. <laughs> I wish I could, like do something to where I could watch it over and over again, because I think it will be so amusing to watch. I wish I could paint the flip book of you doing it, in the process of you doing it. <laughs> you realize that while I'm doing that, you're going to have to corral Sudi and Segura, right? <sighs> I don't know if that's going to work. You think Segura is good at smoozing people? I think she's good at putting them in headlocks. Yes, but I don't think that's the kind of smoozing <laughs> we need now. here. And Sudi, poor Sudi... Sudi might actually be endearing enough that he might get us a really good deal. Think about it. He is a kitty. <laughs> Just don't try to scritch him. You saw how he reacted to Adore. Consent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, re return to the tooth and hookah, I guess? Yeah. What time you, of day is it now? By the time that you're leaving, it's approaching noon. Can we order a lunch from the bar? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's not great, but it's basically just like sandwich fare. So. That's fine. We're going to be going through papers anyway. Yeah. So, making your way through the city streets. Arriving back at the Tooth and Hookah. Giving a nod to the barkeep, letting them know that you want some sandwiches. Heading back upstairs. Make your way back in. I can't remember the name of the priestess, but she I imagine she's still there with Falto. Uh, Amina. Amina. Yes, she would still be there with Falto. How's Falto doing? Better than he was at the beginning of last night, but worse than he was at the end. Mm. Like, after you did provided with that initial restoration, he seemed to have a pick-me-up. You can tell that his constitution's gone back down since then, as he is looking peller and grayer than before. Making your way into the room, the chamber would have that still smell of sickness. Yeah. Uh, although, now, since I believe you guys decided to leave all the fragile paperwork and everything else here, accompanied by that musty smell of paperwork. But from what you... Uh, but as you would enter, Amina would give you the rundown of, he's, he's been doing uh, uh, better today, uh, not as good as before. Would you be able to watch him for a time? Yes, of course. You do what you need to do. We, we still have some, uh, the other half of our group took their share, but Falto and I still have some items that we, uh, we need to resolve. Uh, I, I understand there's a, uh, an auction. Yes, so at the... Uh, uh... Jackal can candy. C canny jackal. It wasn't candy? No. Oh, I thought it was candy. I feel like you're just making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just across the market. You can't miss it. It's got the pillar with all the hands nailed to it. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's to detract thieves. Does it work? I well, considering so. the amount of hands, I don't think so. Uh, well, desperate people will do what they need. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I will... Go and take care of that. I should be back by uh, by nightfall. So, All right. Uh, if you'll keep an eye on uh, Falto for me. I have uh, to finish your shield anyway. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll leave you to it. Mm, while you're doing that, I suppose I'm going to start going through these papers. Okay. So... Mechanically, how it works, going through all those papers and effectively putting them into lots and everything, that will take you the better part of about 12 hours. Oh, goody. Well, uh, I start. You could reduce it down to six if you had a second person helping you, even by splitting the load. Citra not being able to speak ancient Osiriani would not be able to help unless you're holding on to the 
translation tablet. We have that. We left that probably at the room. Yeah. So if you have the translation tablet, you could actually kind of sit in there, translate things with the translation well, tablet. Well, I took a rubbing of it. Well, no, no. You took a rubbing of the decree. Yeah, we still have the, ma- the, the magic stone. item, the Rosetta Stone. Yeah, oh, we still okay. have that. So you could use that and translate these as well. Okay. And then between the two of you, you could finish this in about six hours. Okay. So the two of you would be able to settle in. On your side, I imagine you'd probably take the central common room area. So you've got the, the opening overhead, some natural sunlight coming in through that. A nice little breeze coming in to keep things cool. Yeah. And I'm going to take off my armor and all that crap, too. I'm going to be comfortable while I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well. Citra, I suppose you'd make your way in, finding Falto looking a little grayer than before. He would smile and sit up as you make your way in. You know you don't have to sit up every time I come in the room. Uh, I'm, I, I can't stand, so this is about as polite as I can get. <laughs> I'm not worried about you being polite when you look and probably feel that bad. I... I'm not going to lie, I don't feel my best. Uh. <laughs> well, hopefully tonight we can fix that. Uh, that, that'd be great. Did, did you find a, a scroll or anything? A scroll? Well, Tatmanib said he was going to come take care of you. Oh, right. Oh, I just, uh, I, I, I gave you guys my coin purse and I need to pay for the room. Oh, Sakira. I, I will speak with her. Oh, okay. Um, she might not have realized that we were going to have Tetmanib do it and hopefully didn't go by a scroll. Okay, uh, that, that would be great. Um, Amina doesn't really follow the local currency, and uh, that was all my money. So. <laughs> oh, great. Um, well, if you need us to, we can take care of the room for tonight and we'll uh, get your money back. Oh, no, once, once I've got my coin purse back, it'd be great. Uh, uh, Farhan understands. I, I ex- Well, I didn't explain everything. I mean, I informed him that I had the mummy rot, and he... Uh, he made a really weird sign and spit it, which I thought meant hello, but uh, I believe you told me that it doesn't. So No, that usually means uh, um, more like a casting spirits away. Oh, yes, the mummies. Pretty much, yes. Okay, well, so no, don't let me interrupt you. Well, um, I'll be right back. I need to just go say one thing to Anuris, and then I'll be back in here. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll, uh, I- I'll slump back down. Yes, stay slumped down, even when I come back in. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, Citra goes out into the living room. On yours is like midway through stripping off his armor, <laughs> like... I can't reach this strap. <laughs> um, Sagira stole all his money. What? Remember when we were going to go by the scroll, and then Tetmanib showed up and said that he was going to take care of it? She still took the money. You're joking. No. So we need to get his money back. Apparently that was all the money that he had. We'll get it back. And if she spent it, she's repaying it from her share of the treasure. <sighs> That's going to be a fun conversation. Well, if she's doing it. Anyway, she pulls the strap. <laughs> Thank you. I just was ticked off. I just needed to say that. I'm going to go finish taking care of him. Is he all right? He looks terrible. Well, mummy rot. I, I heard that. You do look terrible. We'll get it fixed. Okay. Just Are a you- few more hours. Have you eaten? I had some olives. When we get the sandwiches up, make sure he eats. Yes. Okay. Citra returns with a sandwich for him and sits on the edge of the bed and makes him eat. Eat a sandwich! (laughs) (laughs) So, all right. So, Citra, I imagine you make yourself comfortable. Yeah. Begin going through the documents and such. Go ahead and make me a linguistics check. You can take 10 if you so wish. I don't have a rank of linguistics. I need Uh, to. I was going to put one in next level so I could learn a new language. Okay. So, in that case, you can make me a perception roll. These dice don't like me. I need to go back to my dice. Uh, that gives me a 16. 16? All right. So the two of you would settle in. On yours, again, making yourself comfortable out there, stripping off all of your armor, tossing off to the side, lounging on a pillow next to this fountain. It's somewhat reminiscent of home. This is the very least one of the nicest places that you've stayed in some time. Yeah. So whether or not you consider that your home, it beats the... Uh, the in room you're staying in previously, or the cell that you're staying at the temple previous to that, or the tiny cell that you were staying at the library previous to that, or the cave. So out of those four previous ones, <laughs> this is nice. This one's not too bad. It's a nice little cross breeze. Citra, you would kind of do the best work that you can. Falto, despite being sick, you wouldn't think he was on his deathbed, considering how much he talks, <laughs> <laughs> and he would banter to you. About any number of things. Mostly about these curious things, or this thing, or, you know, I heard this thing about mummies, or... <laughs> she is yeah. happy to correct most of his yeah, misconceptions. Anytime Sean Uris ever hears something that's wrong, he's like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> in the next room. <laughs> you know? 
And Citra's like, I've got this. I am Osiriani. You'd be about three hours in going through a number. These, the paperwork here is droll. These seem to have been decrees, but a vast majority of these decrees are this pharaoh from the second age has decided that this day will be a holy day in the city of Wati. Five years later, well, this pharaoh's dead, and the following pharaoh decides that's no longer going to be a holy day in the city of Wati. <laughs> <laughs> Just like our presidents and holidays. Yes. So, of course, when you're dealing with uh, recorded history over when this temple fell, which was about 2,000 years ago, from when it was founded, which is about 6,000 years ago, you're looking at about 4,000 years worth of records. Covering every single high priest and his families and his lay priests, etc., etc., etc. And since you're going to guess the Scorch Hand weren't exactly as gentle as they could feasibly be during the process... It is taking a great deal of your own time to t- carefully take them, lay them out, check what that's, they were. That's what we used to do at the library. We're good at this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're both exceptionally skilled with that. Citra would be during your going through the translation, you'd be carrying on a conversation with Falto. This seems to be Falto talking about a stray puppy that he actually had when he was a child back in Absalom. You're just kind of following it. It's like, oh, there's a puppy. So I'm a little bit involved in that. I'm still kind of translating here. From what you understand, the puppy's name was Boozer. Aww. Yeah, he was found out back of a tavern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He loved that dog. Does this not have a happy ending? But it was his dog from when he was like seven. Oh, okay. So, you know, he lived a very long and happy life. Okay, good. And he lives on a farm somewhere. At the very least, that's what Falto thinks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's so sad. Uh Anyway, you wouldn't have actually even registered what you just finished writing the translation for until you would look down to continue and see the name Nahamra. Glancing this over, I imagine you'd start to translate this much faster before realizing that, oddly, for over a day now, you think you've been carrying around what you actually came here looking for. What? The document isn't exactly what you're hoping for. Mm -hmm. No grand declaration. It would simply be a notice for... In addition to the scrolls of inquiry, the request to transfer the interrogation of the priest Nahamra, throne of the sacrosanct order of the blue feather, a transfer of his interrogation and its records to the curator, Kineti, of the dark archive of Tefu. It then lists a lot number. Hmm. Underneath this, it simply states, records of Nahamra transferred and his interrogation for sins against the cosmic order, an expulsion by the pharaoh de II. What on earth did he do? Well, I mean, he was just a dog. He chewed on things. Oh, no, 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 not that. Um, I was looking <laughs> oh, at... Oh, sorry, you're reading. I, I was nattering on. I apologize. No, no you're fine. Are you all right? You, you uh, look a little pale. I found something interesting. I'm not exactly sure what it means yet, though. It'll take some time. Is it... Uh, I'm sorry, that's, that's personal. No, I started asking. You mentioned your brother. Yes. Is it to do with... I know uh, you were concerned about... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm rambling. No, you're fine. It's, it might have something to do with my brother. For, my brother's death wasn't exactly normal. He, uh, he got the mummy uh, rot. Yes, he died of the same thing that you have. Oh, I thought you were going to say that I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tetmanib assures me that you're going to live, and strange as he may be, I I trust Tetmanib. Okay. So. But your, your brother, I'm sorry for your loss. Well, thank you. I, I mean, gave me a purpose, I guess. I mean, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have gotten out of On and moved to Tefu and ended up here in the necropolis, so... Things, don't they say, happen for a reason? Don't know how much I really believe that, but uh, it's nice to think. So uh, how does a a 2,000-year-old sheet of paper help you? Well, like I said, my brother, his death was unique. He, uh, do you know what happens? I, I I don't know if you were aware enough when we were talking about it last oh, night. Oh, Segura or Neuros, I can't remember which, told me I was going to turn into a pile of dust. Yes, well, I suppose on yours rolls his eyes overhearing all this from the next room. <laughs> My brother did not turn to dust exactly. He did, and then something latched on to whatever light was left inside of him and disappeared. Does um, does Onuris know that this happened? Have we talked? Have we ever talked about that? 
Did we ever have this conversation previously? I think probably just you knew that my brother died, but I don't know if I ever told you all the details. Or just from mummy rot, but I don't know that this weird soul thing happened. Yeah. Okay. So, and yours is dropping eaves from the other room. Yeah, I am dropping (laughs) eaves. So he'd probably look up at that and be like, huh, that's weird. (laughs) But not say anything. Like a, like a ghost. Um, Something. Something. (laughs) That's why I decided to figure out what it was, and I asked around, and eventually I found someone who told me that it was probably because of a curse. That... Like, like mummy brought, it's a curse. Yes, but a curse that we had before the mummy brought. We had. Like, Um, like you too. Possibly. I mean, I've never gotten checked. Don't know if that's really the right way to put it, but um, never had a blood screen. <laughs> no, no, never had tox screen or anything like that, you know. <laughs> so, I I always was afraid that maybe it was something that affected our whole family. Granted, I don't want any more people in my family to die mummy rot, so it's not like I can recreate it. So, so I've been trying to research curses and my family and figure out if there's a connection somehow. And this references an ancient ancestor of mine. Oh, okay. Did he do something wrong? Um, maybe? It doesn't give me any details about it, but it looks like the pharaoh was not happy with him. Quote, sins against the cosmic order. Yes, well... Uh, You may actually make me a uh, knowledge nobility. Okay. Can I make a knowledge nobility from my drop in eaves? Yeah, sure. (laughs) Can I roll it untrained? Uh, no. Okay, then no, I know uh, nothing. Yuris gets a 25 from the other room. <laughs> Citra, I suppose you just kind of shrug. On Yuris, who we all know is not stealthy, I imagine you'd easily be able to hear him, like, walking up on the other side of the beaded curtain, kind of listening in to the conversation before... I can hear you. Well, I can hear you, too. You breathe very loudly. <laughs> what did I glean from this knowledge nobility? So, effectively in the past and still in your own belief system as you worship Horus, the pharaoh is effectively the pillar that holds up Osirian. Mm -hmm. By extension, the pharaoh and his successful rule and his ascension into the next life once he passes beyond this mortal coil and goes from being the living embodiment of Horus to the living embodiment of Osiris and continues his battle through the night to keep Ra safe and to progress the sun across the sky. The Pharaoh is the cosmic order. For someone to, quote, sin against the cosmic order would be something along the lines of attempted regicide or something so heinous or horrendous that they are effectively attempting to break the will of Maud. So sins um, against the cosmic order means he did something against this Pharaoh, tried to kill him, tried to usurp order. Hmm. This, uh, Dejerdit? Dejerdit. Which one? The second? And Yuris would make a face for a moment before quickly going back to his normal stoic expression. No, no, no. What was that? What was what? You you had a like flash of, of understanding. Do you know um, who this pharaoh is? He was the pharaoh who ruled Wati after the Jared at the first. The and? Founder of the city. And I just think it's interesting. I will let... Yeah, I'll let both of you make a wisdom check. Come on, on yours, you should be good at this. On yours gets a 22. Still beats me, but I get a 20. Both of you would, of course, um, this probably has already occurred to you somewhat as players, realize that that means that your ancestor, this priest Nahamra that is referenced here, must have been serving at the temple at the same time as the mask was delivered by the pharaoh to Jared at the second, and entrusted here as well. No, the... F- did Jared at the yeah, did Jared at the second yeah was yeah the was of the city. he was also the same one that provided the mask and also this quote covering up their secret shame. I wonder if your ancestor tried to do something with the mask. They were a priest, right? Or he was a patsy. It. That's probably not a term they would know. Or he was <laughs> he may have been like their scapegoat, like their something to blame it on, so that the pharaoh was. Do you know anything else about this ancestor? No. I just started translating it. Uh, Both of you also make make me a knowledge, local, or geography. On yours knows neither one of those things. For local, I get a 27. In here, it references what they refer to as the Dark Depository. You and Onuris, both being from Tefu, know that the Library of Tefu, which is administrated by the Church of Nethys, is divided widely into two separate sections. There is the Outer Sanctum, which is effectively where the two of you worked. The Outer Sanctum is available, generally speaking, to the public, 
Uh, there are some sections that actually require a gold piece expenditure to enter and actually have access to and the knowledge and such. That's the library building that's on the surface. Okay. The inner sanctum of the Library of Tefu is divided into four separate portions. One of these four portions is known as the Dark Depository. Huh. Those areas can only be accessed with permission from the Hatia, which is basically the governor herself. Huh. The Hatia of Tefu also being the High Priestess of Nethys. Interesting. So whatever documents were taken from here seem to have been taken by a curator of the Library of Tefu then taken to the Dark Depository, which is one of the secret vaults underneath Tefu. So you think that this, uh, this ancestor of yours did something bad and that the pharaoh cursed them? Uh, possible. I'd like to hope not, though. Can you curse a whole family? It's just... Uh, seems a little extreme. Well, cosmic sins, so... I don't know. I probably need to finish translating the rest of it. Or I need to go to Tefu and figure out what these documents were. This more or less just seems to be a receipt for the documents from what they're referring to here as the uh, the Scrolls of Inquiry. Hmm. Which make you think that this was probably from some sort of official questioning. Hmm. Which in ancient Osiriani could have also been torture. Yeah. See so back to our previous episode with Sigur and Sudi. And that there's not much of a difference between questioning and questioning under duress in Osirian. Hmm. That was definitely not what I was expecting to figure out tonight. Huh. Well, when we get a chance to return to Tefu, hopefully we can find out more. It's going to really s be... It's going to be terrible if my entire family is cursed over this one thing. Cosmic sins against the Pharaoh are not something to be taken lightly, but maybe there's something we can do to undo it. That would yeah, be could, nice. To the current Pharaoh? Like, could you just go to his palace and ask sure. him to take it off? I really doubt the pharaoh is going to want to see a peasant like me. Oh. I'm sure okay. he has more important things to do. I'm sorry, I'm a foreigner. <laughs> I don't I don't understand. So you just pick your ruler? Well, we have a lord, but he has a, a council that are his advisors. The, the council is actually chosen by representatives. Huh. Yes. That's weird. That's a barbaric. Our pharaoh is divinely appointed. <laughs> I may disagree with him. He doesn't worship the right god. <laughs> but he is Horus on Earth. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and you, you didn't finish saying, though, what, what happened with your brother? I don't know. I... This, this ghost just showed up and... I disappeared. It ran out. <laughs> That's... I'm sorry. So there's part of me that hopes maybe one day I'll find it again and I can... Save my brother from whatever that thing was. Well, if, if it requires violence, I could help. <laughs> I'm good with a sword. Current uh, uh, situation, notwithstanding. <laughs> well, thankfully I've got a, a group of people that also tend to be fairly good with swords. Thankfully I have a group of people that seem to be really focused on undead. <laughs> <laughs> I will leave you to it then. I'm going to take a break from translating and go back to painting. Thank you for, for sharing. Yeah, I don't really get to talk about it that much, to be honest. My parents don't really mention it. Well, let me keep telling you about the further uh, misadventures of Boozy. At that point, on your sleeves. Citra, <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you can continue your painting here, go back to your translating, back to the painting and such. Just kind of keep yourself occupied. Uh, you don't find any further mention. This really seems to have been a throwaway sheet of paper. Hmm. Even the person in question doesn't seem to have realized its importance. If, in fact, it was remotely important, it might just be important to you. The evening would progress rather uneventfully for you. On yours, on the other hand, Ooh. you pretty much just kind of turn back away from that, go, well, I'm not going to involve myself with this dog conversation or whatever it is. Turning and stepping back in, you could make your way back over, settle down on your cushion before you'd notice the shadow. Staring up, a falcon would sit on the ledge and the awning overhead, staring down at you. One eye of gold, one eye simply blank and silver. Incline my head at the bird. It would kind of pop back and forth a couple of times flutter forward before landing down on the ground. Reach out a hand towards the bird. <laughs> it would recoil for a second before kind of leaning in. You notice that the bird is a beautiful burnished golden bronze with black wings towards its tips and spackling uh, of white and black across its breast and chest. Its right eye is golden, its left eye bears a scar across it and seems to be cataracted over giving it an almost blank white. I'm going to pet the bird, if it lets me. Yeah, it's roughly the size of a halfling. What are you doing here? Hmm? Can it speak? No. no. 
<laughs> That's just, you know, I talked to Mikey too. <laughs> you know? As your fingers would trace across it, you for a moment feel this odd vertigo sense, like falling in reverse. Not quite flying, but just this odd sense of movement. The bird would stare at you intently and you would feel this gut reaction. Like that, that sense of walking into a, a sacred site or a temple. The messenger would simply watch you. Are you going to stay then? It would ruffle its feathers in a way that makes it seem like it can't truly really understand you. But I'm going to dig around in my pack and give it a piece of jerky. It would eat this ravenously. Uh, it would hop up on top of the statue and begin drinking from the fountain. I'm going to chill with my new bird buddy. <laughs> <laughs> gotta freak someone out when they come in. <laughs> <laughs> what the F is the bird? <laughs> the bird and the cat get into a fight to the death. <laughs> Although I think mechanically speaking, both of them are small sized creatures. Yes, they <laughs> are. True. This is a big bird. <laughs> Real big bird. Yeah, friggin' eagle. Like one of those golden eagles that it's, flies off with children. And it's a it's a creatures. falcon. Yeah. But congratulations. Uh what did you name your falcon? Uh on her it. On hurt, mm-hmm. on you, on and on hurt. Thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. On hurt, yes. H a n h u r e t. Okay. On hurt. I'm glad that Sagira didn't name her cat Sagirtra. <laughs> 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 All right, you people, your pet names. On hurt. It sounds different than on Uris. <laughs> you said it's really similar. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you could settle in. The day would pass with you. On your side, I imagine you just kind of get like, hey, I've got this bird here, and then it just kind of feels natural. Yeah. It's like, okay, the bird's just like watching. He's uh, my, it stares. He's my totem guide. Okay. That's his archetype. <laughs> he stares at you a lot. Uh, okay. What does uh, totem guide actually give you? Uh, I don't think it gives me anything at first level, but it does change up some stuff eventually. You yeah, asked me this, of course. You would spend your afternoon and beginning into the evening. Um, of all the various works I imagine that you've had in your life, from being uh, born with a silver spoon into your mouth, to being a uh, ridiculously rich as a small child, uh, <laughs> to think? being ridiculously rich as a young man, to wandering the desert and being a temple curator, I imagine the curation of history has always been a passion. I think you have a lot of ranks in it. Yes, I do. <laughs> well, as the evening would progress, you could kind of just sit back and enjoy the classic exercise of going through this, of reading over all of these old documents and comparing them and then compiling them properly and then putting them into the proper lots and so on and so forth. It's almost like being back in the library, particularly with the sound of Citra rambling on in the next room. (laughs) (laughs) It's like I'm home. The evening would pass so quickly that you're surprised when you would hear the knock on the door. I suppose get up and answer the door. Tetman would stand on the other side of the doorway. It's actually only at this point that you kind of cock your head, glance back, and realize that at some point you must have lit a lantern. <laughs> because the sun has set in full. Ah, Tetman Good evening. Good evening. Might I join you? Of course. Come in. Ah, of course. Now, Falto is where you found him last. I suspected he would be. There's a bird. Yes. He seems to be my new friend. Hmm. Birds are exceptionally intelligent creatures. Far more so than people give them credit for. He is different than a normal bird. What makes you say that? (laughs) Through here. Of course. Good. He would make his way forward, kind of stopping at the bird, which would stare at him intently, oddly seeming to, like, puff up a little bit (laughs) in kind of a disconcerted way as... Tetmanib and it would stare unblinkingly at each other for a couple of moments before he'd simply shake his head. (laughs) Citra, you would hear his laughter, of course, before you'd see the man himself. As Tetmanib would stride (laughs) into the the chamber. She's working on the shield when he walks in. Citra. Tetmanib, nice to see you again. I think you mean that. Why wouldn't I? You are here to help, yes? Yes. And of course it's nice to see you. Good. That's excellent work. The Eye of Horse. Thank you. Hmm. What? I took some liberties, obviously. Of course. I've always found it interesting. Every society, they have their own protective wards. But it always comes back to eyes. Why is that, do you think? Mm, I don't know. Sometimes the right look can scare the crap out of you. 
I know my mom, whenever she would get really angry at me and my brother, one look from her sent us running out of the house. Hmm. I don't remember my mother. I'm sorry. It was a very long time ago. How old are you? How old do I look? How old does he look? Well, I mean, his face and features are extraordinarily youth- youthful, but his hair and beard are stark white, so... You know, I'm not really sure. You have a couple of contradictions happening. I get that a lot. I'm somewhere in my 30s. Hmm. You don't know how old you are? It was... Sometimes it's difficult to remember. Hmm. Things become jumbled. I understand that. Uh, your friend is done. Hopefully Fall not through for a pill, kind of, somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> Do not worry. Not tonight. Perhaps soon. Oh, that, that's not what I want to hear. No need to be so ominous, Tetmanub. Although perhaps never. Well, we all die. I guess it depends on your definition of soon. Precisely. So what is your definition of soon? 10, 20 years. Oh, well, that's not as much to worry about. Yeah, that, that would be much better than today. <laughs> all right. Settle down, little rogue. We'll see what we can do. He would kneel down, speaking prayers to Phrasma. Both of you may make me a perception roll. Citra gets a 24. On yours gets a 27. Both of you would hear his prayers, hear his chant. He would lay his hand on him. The smell in the room would seem to dissipate slightly. He would continue his prayers and chants before he would lay a hand on him a second time. At which point, the room would seem to, at the very least, grow a little bit cooler, and color would seem to return back to his cheeks. He would continue his prayer for another half minute or so as he waves a hand back over him, as you would see his strength seem to return back to his limbs and his body, as he would just kind of shudder. For a moment, both of you would hear a sound, almost like birdsong coming from nearby. I think he should be good now. Thank you. Don't suppose you ever removed disease on you, too? Citra is still feeling under the weather. Hmm. Well, I prepared today to remove two curses and two diseases. I have removed one curse and one disease. Do you need your curse removed as well? Agnes? I had it taken care of at the temple this morning. Ah, uh, uh, yes, yes, you did. And you spoke with Septi. Yes. Good. Interesting. What? Yes, I can help with your disease if you so need. Okay. Yes, please. Very well. As I seem to make you somewhat uncomfortable, I will inform you I will need to touch your forehead. Thank you. It's just because I don't understand how you talk. (laughs) Nothing to fear from me, little raven. He would step forward, whispering out a prayer to Phrasma and placing it on your forehead. You'd feel a wash of energy go through you. You don't feel as achy. That's good. You're still suffering all the ability damage. I'll fix that in a minute. (laughs) Yeah. But no, the disease is gone. Yeah, much better. Thank you. Of course. Well, I think your friend... Well, I will leave the two of you to it. There's probably another room I could wait nearby for your other companions to show up. I may be able to, at the very least, help uh, Segura with her curse. I'm sure she'd appreciate that. Of course. On yours, perhaps you can accompany me. Of course. I suppose the two of you would lead off. Falto would you know, just kind of smile. Wow, I feel a hundred percent better, actually. That's good. Ugh. Uh, I really need a bath. <laughs> yes. yes, you probably do. I suppose you help him pry off all the bandages from his arm and everything. Yeah. Which are uh, really sick, sick and gross, although the wound is completely gone now with just a thin veneer of pinkish white new flesh from where he was gashed before. Oh, wow, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a huge improvement. It's amazing what the magic can do. It's true. Um, thank you for, for getting your friend involved and... Uh, that's the thing with Tetmanib, is he just kind of knows when to be places. We didn't actually contact him. Oh, well, he seems to almost be following you. Or all of you. Hopefully for a good reason. <laughs> uh, hopefully. Um, yeah, so, uh, I guess back in the action. Uh, Shower first. Yes. Oh, well, I guess uh, it's just a little after sunset now. Mm-hmm. He would stand up to his feet, beginning to make his way forward before kind of pausing. You know, I didn't... Um, I didn't bring this up yesterday, um, but Segura, when I was sick, sometime between making fun of me and uh, telling me that I was going to die and stealing my money. Yeah, we're working on that. <laughs> yeah, which might put a cramp. Um, she mentioned uh, 
her friend kind of liked me. Hmm? What friend? Oh, oh sorry. I completely misread that. I apologize. No, who was she talking about? I, I, I thought you. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so uh, after a bath and uh, potentially your friend giving me my money back, uh, maybe I could treat you to uh, dinner. Something a little less uh, drunken and statue kissing. I mean, that was fun. Well, but... yes. I mean, we could do that if that's what you want to do. I uh, think something a little less uh, acrobatic would be in line. <laughs> that, that would be great. So yeah, you probably know local cuisine better than I do. Um, not really. I'm not from here. Oh, well, I pretty much been subsisting off of bread and olives the entire time I've been down here, because I don't know how to order anything else. <laughs> ah, well, I can help with that. I'll ask around and see what some of the good restaurants are. Okay, great. Then if that's the case, uh, I'll go I'll go get a bath, and I'll leave you to doing your thing. And hopefully I'll either have money soon, or I've got a da dagger or something I could sell, uh, which would probably be enough to pay for dinner. I think you should keep your dagger and I could pay for it. <laughs> That's also a thing. I am a progressive Absalom man. <laughs> so, uh... Onyrus's <laughs> eyes roll hardcore from somewhere. <laughs> you know? Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really gross right now, so, uh... I will leave you to it. Yes, thank you. Citro walks out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Onyrus, you and Tetmanib would step back into the other room, it's supposed to try to ignore the general conversation. There's a big bird when you when you walk out. Yeah, I figure she gives like a little jolt of like, what the crap? <laughs> Why is there a giant bird in the living room? It's my bird. You just adopted a bird while I was watching Falto? Yes, actually. Okay. I, I think Horace sent him. Okay. Well, that's new. The gods work in mysterious ways. So I've heard. I will go downstairs okay. and get him some bath water. <laughs> Get extra bubbles for him. Sure. He deserves it. Salt <laughs> bomb or, or uh, bath bomb or whatever. I've been meaning to talk with you on yours. Mm, about? I'm concerned for you. What for? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that was, that was, uh, I have a problem with being dramatic. I've noticed, but I just sort of take it in stride. Good. Not everyone does. I want you to understand. I want you to know that you aren't alone. What do you mean? You kind of glance back in the direction of Falto's room, lean in the way that he does to people, almost uncomfortably close. I also died once. Really? Yes. It's been a long time. You seem to have come out better looking than I did. <laughs> uh, the hair never came back. Not the way it used to be. <laughs> so why are you concerned? It can be difficult. For people to fully recover. This isn't how it should be. I've been told that. In a vision, I suppose. Do you agree? I'm not supposed to be here. Can I let you in on a secret? Certainly. I made a mistake. What kind of mistake? We're friends, aren't we, on yours? Of course. Good friends. I suppose. I don't feel like I know you as well as I know some of my other friends, but I get the feeling everyone feels that way about you. <laughs> not everyone, but yes, when I'm not talking to myself, the others. <laughs> I understand the cruelties of this world. I was seven when I died. That's very young. My father was a paladin, Mesrinib. He inspired thousands. And I marched along beside him. I was one of those inspired by him. He had a phrase, death before dishonor. He lived up to it. He died battling insurgents. Did you die too? No, I was returning back to my home. Citra and I share that. Was born in on. Lived there for much of my life. My young life. I evaded the slavers. Traveled back as best I could with the caravan. I watched travelers kill for scraps of food, and I was knifed in the back by a hungry boy, no older than I, for my water skin. I didn't even have water. And then I... <laughs> I'm getting there. I cheated death. I convinced the spirits of Phrasma to not send me to my judgment. To let you go back. 
Yes, to let me return back to the world of the living. Back to my body. And I awoke alone in the desert, and I limped back to On, and I fell upon the mercies of the Church of Phrasma, and because I knew what I did was wrong. Is this the mistake you'd made, coming back? I think so. But I came to an important realization. One that I want to share with you. And what is that? He would lean in, again into that uncomfortably close range. They say the prophecy broke. But even in that moment it was supposed to, Phrasma still saw the end. Phrasma is still the goddess of fate. Phrasma doesn't make mistakes. I think, I say, I just said, that I cheated death. But did you really? I could not have returned if she didn't will it. You could not have returned if she didn't will it. But I don't know if I had a choice. <laughs> You that. wanted to come back. What if I didn't? I wanted to come back because I was a scared seven-year-old boy who had just been stabbed to death out in the desert. And so I came back. You? Oh. Perhaps your choices were different, but it does not change the fact that you came back. And here you are. I just want you to know that you are exactly where you should be. <laughs> no. Uh, so dramatic. <laughs> Thank you, Tetmanet. Of course, my good friend, Onuris. It will be waiting for you. What? Your life on the other side. It's always just there. I can still feel it, you know. I wonder sometimes. I wonder if my father was disappointed. He died, and he must have been heartbroken at the tragedy of his son following so shortly after him, and then to glimpse me for but a moment before I fled back across the veil. Wouldn't he be happy that you were back to live your life? It depends. Death is only the beginning on yours. That's what they say. On the other side, it's just our next life. It doesn't change the fact that I broke a promise. You did, but why? I don't know the answer to that question, and I have a feeling if you do, you're not going to tell me. <laughs> My vision doesn't extend beyond the Pell. Citra is about to return. You should speak to your friends on this sometime. They won't believe me. They'll just do what Mother did. You have found a course now, eventually, much as Citra seems to have found her proof now. He would cock his head as if coming to realization. Oh yes, you are following the course of fate. You're on the path of Loft. Eventually, you will have your proof. Perhaps you can tell them then. Perhaps. All four of your courses are converging once again. Sudi and Sagira will be here shortly. <laughs> I'm glad we had this talk on yours. I hope it helps you. I hope so too. Thank you. And for what it's worth, I think the goddess understands. He would smile, making his way off to go and check in on Falto. Both Citra returns. With a bunch of bath salts as they start bringing up all the water. And you're just kind of looking awkwardly off a win off out a window. <laughs> yeah. The bird turning towards you. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have a name? On hurt. On hurt. Mm hmm Sounds a lot like on yours. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Is he friendly? It's my reincarnated bird son. I believe he's friendly. So I can pet him. Sure. Warily, Citra goes over there and attempts to pet the bird. Make me a charisma check. <laughs> oh, really? Me or it? You. <laughs> Probably not. Nine. It spreads its nearly ten foot wingspan and beats it around. Be nice. <laughs> Apparently On not yours, You can make a charisma check. <laughs> Sixteen. All right. It shoots you the stink eye with its one good eye, but it settles down. Your bird is not as cuddly as the cat. It's, he's a bird. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> My handle animal is not as good as the ranger. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose the two of you would settle in, get ready for the return of your compatriots. You would hear them all ascend back up the stairs. You hear a third voice with them, actually, which would be somewhat surprising for all of you. Do we recognize the voice? No, it sounds to be a woman's voice. But you could finish with Tetmanib, who gives some instructions towards Balto about, you know, you know, you'll want to burn those and generally clean up this entire... In fact, I would suggest just cleaning this whole room and not staying in it this evening. Uh, finding another place to stay. But you just kind of be like, hey, well, I can't afford to run another in-room right now. Um. <laughs> just have to sleep in the living room. Yeah, just sleep in the living room. Make a pallet of pillows. That'll be fine. 
giving the run down there before I suppose the two of you would uh, make your way back towards the uh, central room to go meet up with the rest of your companions, learn what, what misadventures Sudi and Segura were up to in the previous week's episode. And we will pick it up here next time. Until next time, Pathfinders, thank you for listening. Got some oh. cool stuff going on in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> got, some, got some cool stuff. It's going to be date night. I know. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I t- <laughs> when you said the whole friend thing, I was like, what friend is she talking about? <laughs>